Praise the Lord, everybody. You can be seated. Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of this young man. I'm not going to preach, but can I have five minutes? Let me thank the people who took a little piece of my, sir, my, my time. You might have taken the whole time, but you took two extra minutes here, two extra minutes there, two extra minutes here, two extra minutes there. When you add it all up, y'all took up all my time. I want to salute Jessica. Thank the Lord for you. And I, I know everybody has said to you that uh, you and August will, will, always, will always be there. People say that all the time. But know that the First Baptist Church of Glenarden will be there for you all the time. August, I want you to come up here for a minute. Come here. You look just like your daddy. Now I want you to look out, because I want you to remember this the rest of your life. I want you to look across this sanctuary and see the thousands of people that are here to honor your father. Your father was a great man. People have come from all over, this, all over the country to celebrate his life. And, and I want you to just see this picture of all these people that came to honor your dad, okay? For the rest of your life, I want you to know that, okay? You got it? I, I knew I wasn't gonna have to invite you up here twice. I knew you were gonna come up here as soon as I asked you to come up here because you got, you, you, you smooth. Amen. You're going to be seated. I'm almost finished. I wanted to do two things. That was one. When uh, Aaron, I know Aaron through, from his, from his childhood, from his, before he was born, his parents played a significant role in my life. Uh, when I was a young teenager, I hung out with a young gentleman around the corner from me who happens to be his mother's brother, Aaron's uncle, who, who lived all the way you weren't supposed to live. He was a bad role model. <laughs> he later got saved, thank God. Thank God, no matter how bad you are, God can turn your life around. And so I used to go around to their house all the time. His grandfather, Nisi's father, uh, was a backslidden preacher. He stopped preaching and gave me all his theological books. Later, when he rededicated himself to the Lord and got back into preaching, I kept the books. Pray for me. <laughs> and I admired Nisi. Nisi, uh, his mama, Aaron's mama, had an impact on my life because as a young teenager, uh, I started a gospel group called Reverend John Jenkins and the Satan Stompers. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> I did. I did. I was a teenager. I was stupid. I was. <laughs> and she said to me, don't give the devil any credit. Don't even call his name. So I changed the name of my group. I don't even know what I called it. I just know it wasn't Satan Stompers anymore. That family has had a tremendous impact on my life. Kenny sung at my wedding. Me and my wife have been married 43 years. He sung at our wedding. And they gave birth to Aaron. They brought Aaron into this world. And Aaron, uh, I've watched him grow up. Uh, I, 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 and... and uh, when he applied to work at our church, I'm almost finished. I was waiting on somebody to say, take my time. 
Y'all shouldn't have told me to take my time. He applied for the drummer job at our church. And the music department came and told me, Pastor, this guy is a beast. That's the word they use. I said, what's so beasty about him? <laughs> I knew him as a young man growing up, but I had no concept of the magnitude of his skills. I didn't know. They said he plays for Usher. I said, I didn't know our ushers had a band. <laughs> No harm, Usher. That's not my world. So I didn't, I didn't know anything about you, bro. My apologies. <laughs> and I was honored that he chose to want to do something significant. That significant thing was he made a decision to leave the road of fame and fortune and importance to be with his family. That's worthy of a shout and a praise that he wanted to be with his family. What causes a person to do that? Only an encounter with Jesus Christ. At some point in the journey of his life, he made a decision to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. He made a choice, a timely choice, a significant choice because we did not know when he made that decision in 2021 that he would be where he is today. We didn't know that he would have a limited time to be with us, and neither do you know how long you have to live. And I'm just wondering what kind of decisions have you made as it relates to Jesus? I'm proud of him and the choices that he made. I'm proud that he decided to say, you know what, I want to be closer to my family. I want, I want to be a family man. I want to be a good husband to my wife, I want to be a good father to my son. There's, you know, the reason our world is in so much turmoil is because people have abandoned family. Okay, I know I said five minutes and I took, how long I've been going? I'm bringing my plane in for a landing, I'm pulling my car into the garage, I'm pulling my boat into the dock, I'm putting the dishes in the dishwasher, I'm putting the clothes in the dryer, I'm coming in for a close. The question is, what have you done about the Lord Jesus? You know what he recognized? He recognized, just like all of us need to recognize, that we've done enough in our life to deserve to be condemned to hell. But the great news is, there is a Savior who died on the cross so that you and I could be forgiven of whatever we've done. There is somebody here today who needs to be forgiven who recognized if you died right now, if you, you know, when Aaron died, it was quick. I got a text in the middle of the night and before the 24 hours had passed, he was gone. It pays to be ready because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know whether or not today is your last day. You could walk out of here today and it could be your last day. Would you be prepared to stand before Jesus? and give an account of how you've lived your life. My job is to tell you today that he will forgive you of your sins if you make a commitment and put your faith in him. I believe that there are some people here today who say, you know what, Pastor Jenkins, I want that Jesus. I want that forgiveness. I want, I want to be able to have the confidence of knowing that I don't have to fear death. And if that's you, I would ask you to have the courage and the boldness to get up out of your seat right now and come down and meet me right here and say, I want that Jesus in my life right now. Don't be ashamed. 
Don't be embarrassed. I'm, I'm looking for that first person to have the courage, and I believe there's a bunch of other people who are going to follow you if you just say, you know what? I need to get right with God. I need to get right with Jesus. I need forgiveness of my sins. Come on up and get right with him right now. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Yes. So proud of you. So proud of you. Somebody else, come right this moment. Don't be nothing to be ashamed about. We're gonna clap and celebrate. I know that devil's trying to hold you back, trying to deceive you and trick you. Come and say yes to the Lord Jesus right now. He will forgive you. He will wash your sins away. He will make you right with the eternal God. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for somebody today that's wrestling in their seat. Release them in Jesus' name. Take the devil's hands off of them, Lord, and let them come now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go ahead, look at your neighbor, ask him. Say, if it's you, I'll walk down there with you so you don't have to go by yourself. Ask him. Is he talking to you? Is the Holy Spirit nudging you? Do you need to go and get right with God? Go ahead, say it to him. I'm proud of you, young man. So proud of you, so proud of you. Somebody else, come on, right this moment, right? I see you, come on, amen. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. The angels are dancing and shouting. That's right, come on and get it right with God. I see you, the Lord sees you. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So proud of you, sir. Wow. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Look at me. Let me talk to you for a minute. Jesus loves you. He loves you enough he died on the cross so you could have a relationship with the eternal God. All he wants you to do is repent of how you've lived, been living. Say, you know what? I'm going to get off this road, get off the track I've been going, and I'm going to follow you, Jesus. And put your faith in his death, burial, and resurrection. Are you willing to do that? 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 You willing? You willing? You willing to do that? You willing? You willing? You willing? You willing? I'm so proud of you. I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer of commitment to the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these who've come today in front of these thousands of people to get right with you. They're reaching out in their hearts to you. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, to forgive them and cleanse them and wash them. I pray today that you would fill them with your spirit, transform and change their lives. Give them a heart to repent and the faith to believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. In Jesus' name. Now pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, y'all join them. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I confess my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead. Make me your child. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you for the free gift of salvation. I accept my salvation now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Do you believe that? So proud of you, sir. So proud of you, buddy. Amen. So proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. So proud of you. Step over here. Amen. So proud of you. I think you were the first person down. I'm so proud of you. God bless you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Now, y'all got to find a church. Where y'all live at? Wherever you live, there's a church nearby. Go tell them that you made a decision today for Jesus Christ, okay? 
if you don't have a church, we'll be right here on Sunday morning at 8, 10, and 12, okay? You can go back to your seats. Help me shout. Give them a hug when they come back to their seats. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give, oh, I praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody got saved because of you, Aaron. Somebody's life got turned around because of you, young man. Somebody made a commitment to Jesus because of you, Aaron. Thank God for you, buddy. I'm going to call for the mortician to come. We are well over time. So let me call for the morticians to come and we're going to dismiss God. Y'all let the family leave first before y'all leave, okay? Can y'all do that? Let me try that again. Let the family leave first before y'all leave. Can y'all do that? Thank you. Thank you for listening. Until then, believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Praise Network.